What is going on guys? Craig1287 here, bringing you my hardware review for the Asus ROG Swift PG278Q monitor. Yes, that is a mouthful, but it is worth it to get through because this monitor is fantastic. Now, before getting to the actual review, I want to say that down in the video description below, there is going to be quite a few links, one of which is to the transcribed review for this. So if you prefer your review in written form, you can check that out and read the full written review yourself. Also down there in the description is going to be some of the specs of the compute of uh, the uh, monitor. So check those out if you want to just see some of the raw things that I found to be pertinent to your purchasing decision of this monitor. So let's get to the actual review. Normally for a game review, I would break the review up into different components of the game, like audio design, uh, visuals, both technical and artistic, the gameplay, story, characters, etc. But with this monitor, it's, it's almost all about the visuals. That is the purpose of this monitor, to display quality visuals. Having said that, there are some non-visual aspects of the PG278Q that I can assign some brownie points for, so let's get those out of the way first. The PG278Q does sport some of the thinnest bezels I've ever seen in any monitor that I've ever used. For those of you wondering, bezels are the kind of the frame around the actual screen. Now, while this isn't a game changer, it's just nice. It's a nice thing to have, these thin bezels especially if you want to go multi-monitor support. Uh, for those gamers that do want to use their own mounting system, the monitor does have a uh, VESA support for a 100 by 100 millimeter mount on the back, if that's your thing. Uh, for inputs, there is a single DisplayPort 1.2 port. This is not going to work with DVI, HDMI. This has got to be DisplayPort 1.2. And there's also two USB 3.0 ports on the back that you can use as a pass-through for your mouse, keyboard, or flash drives, anything of that sort. Finally, the PG278Q offers an OSD, an on-screen display. Uh, this feature will allow you to place something like a timer on your screen, mostly a feature for mobile users, as well as picking between a few different crosshairs that you can place on there this obviously for first-person shooter fans. Now, both of these OSD features can be moved around the screen using the monitor's settings. You'll see that later in the video. Now, to the visual quality of the monitor, which, other than simply stating the specs, again, which are listed in the video description, it's not something that is easily conveyed in text or in auditory form, but I'll try my best. The clarity of the PG278Q is the highest I have ever used in a monitor that I personally owned. The 2560 by 1440 resolution, or also known as 1440p, also known as 2.5k, we'll go with 1440p, uh, matched with the size of the screen diagonally, this is 27 inch screen, so the two of those, the resolution and the size of the screen, come together to provide one of the highest PPI or pixel per inch in any monitor that I've ever used, which comes out to around 109 PPI. Now, you'll need a fairly powerful GPU with at least 3 gigs of VRAM. This is not a, this is not a minimum, this is not a requirement, but I'm just saying to realistically render your games at 1440p, you need a beefy 3 gig VRAM GPU to do that. But if you have it, it, the clarity is just stunning. Now I sit about two feet away from my monitor and I just don't feel any need to use anti-aliasing or DSR, dynamic super resolution, which is where the game renders at something like 4K resolution and then down samples to your 1080p or your 1440p uh, actual your native resolution. Now I don't really see any jaggies again two feet away at 1440p. Now the problem is I do find myself having to actually lower my in-game resolutions in some games to 1920 by 1080 due to the second spec that I'm trying to achieve for the monitor and that is it is a 144 hertz monitor so you can game at 144 frames per second. Now gaming at high frame rates, things higher than 60, it is amazing. 
Now, a few years ago, some of the you know, high-end monitors were reaching 120 hertz, but now 144 hertz is the king of high refresh rates. Going from 120, if that's what you're at now, to this 144 hertz, it's not going to be the biggest change out there, but if you are currently on a 60 hertz monitor or TV, then this monitor, it's going to blow your mind. Uh, for more details on high frame rate gaming, check out uh, two of the links that I added in the video description. One to a Super Bunny Hop video on it, as well as uh, another link to a very lengthy and detailed post talking about how high frame rates uh, do benefit gaming, separate from something like the film industry. Now, what really makes the PG278Q stand out amongst all other monitors is that it is the first to combine the 1440p resolution with the refresh rate of 144Hz with the final spec that's responsible for a roughly $200 premium on this monitor, and that is that it natively supports G-Sync. Okay, now in short, G-Sync removes frame rate tearing, or just frame tearing, that is created when your GPU, your video card, produces different frame rates than what your monitor is currently displaying. V-Sync, or vertical synchronization, has existed for years, and it fixes this. However, for that one problem that it fixes, it creates two new issues, and those two issues are frame rate stuttering and input lag. Frame rate stuttering is a pretty annoying thing when your frames bounce between 59 and under and then 60 and above because your, your V-Sync is going to be cutting you at 30, 60, 30, 60, 30, 60, and that can look very disorienting. Input lag is worse than the devil. Google it if you want to figure out what that is, but just know that V-Sync introduces this. Now, G-Sync provides the synchronized smoothness of V-Sync, but without either of those two drawbacks. As long as I personally was getting 45 to 50 frames at least in my games, G-Sync worked flawlessly. To test this, I cranked things at 1440p. I turned on things like 4 times MSAA. Uh, I just cranked all the settings to Ultra, Max, just to get my frames to drop as much as possible. And it was around that 45 to 50 frames per second zone that I realized G-Sync was no longer working and I was noticing screen tearing. Keep that in mind, but if you're getting this, you better have a rig that can pump out 100 frames per second or more in your games consistently. Setting up G-Sync is as easy as toggling one button in the NVIDIA control panel. You literally open up control panel, go to the tab for setting up G-Sync, and you click the button that says enable G-Sync. It's that simple. At the time that I purchased my PG278Q, okay guys, it had an MSRP of $799.99. That's, that's pretty expensive. Now, with Tennessee tax, that ended up costing me around $890. Now, I'm not saying this to brag. I was saving up for it. Now, this made it the single most expensive part I have ever purchased for a computer. More than any single GPU I have ever purchased, which was $650 for a single GPU in 2006, the 8800 GTX. It costs even more than most people will spend on a whole high-end computer, which people can typically get for around $700-$800. Now, again, I'm not saying this to brag. I say this to give some perspective when I say that this is the most worthwhile computer part I have ever purchased, by far. I use it every single day for both gaming, web browsing, and for my work. The resolution, the frame rate, and G-Sync all help improve all three of those things. All of them have had their quality of use improved by the use of this monitor. Now having said that, it's nowhere near a standard choice for PC gaming. It is very much a luxury item for well over 90% of PC gamers. This, however, does not change the fact that gaming at 2560 by 1440 at 144 frames per second with G-Sync enabled is the most visually pleasing experience I have ever had in my 22 years of PC gaming and something that one day I hope all gamers, not just PC gamers, but all gamers can experience this level of clarity and smoothness and consistency. I cannot think of one problem that the PG278Q 
has. The build quality is superb. Uh, no dead pixels. The UI is the most user-friendly one I have ever encountered. And G-Sync, the main selling point for this monitor, delivers on exactly what it was advertised to do. If this is something you guys want, again, not need, if this is something you want, this luxury that you want, make it a goal of yours to start saving up because it is totally worth it. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this hardware review for the Asus ROG Swift PG278Q. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a good one. Ta-ta.